When facing the new reality of an affair, or really simply a disappointment in a relationship, it can, it can be extremely heartbreaking. And then it's like, where, what do we do? Where do we go to from here? And for Audrey and myself, we had never fully realized how different we were from each other and how communication had really broken down and how we were actually living quite isolated. It was really quite surprising. And it was so shocking because um, I don't think that we felt like we had a bad marriage. So no. I, I, it was literally like, how did this affair happen to us? And so you begin to really ask that question, at least for me, it was a big one. Why? Yeah. That's the big, why? Why would you do this? And every time that you do that, even though it's a great question and even necessary at times, it's always a judgment. And if you remain in that corner and demanding the why, I'm sorry, but you'll never ever have a satisfying answer to that question. I definitely remember you asking me that question. Repeatedly. And I just, if I only knew why. Mm -hmm. I would have loved to tell me. And if you would say, Audrey, were you living in a lie for those first 17 years of your marriage? I would say no. Like, I would have totally yeah. denied it. I didn't even realize the communication breakdown that had taken place. But now, so many years later, I can see what had happened is that I was actually scared of conflict. I was scared of telling you what I really thought in places you had disappointed me or asking you for more because I didn't feel it was safe. I feel like you would rise up and defend yourself and make it worse. Well, I did because I was nervous. You know, nobody wants to be really discovered for who they really are, you know, and there's something within men that is, you know, that is a tendency or a weakness. And that weakness is that I'm not enough, you know, that I would be a disappointment. So we're always trying to be more than what we perceive ourselves, you know, to ourselves to be. So I guess if I told you anything that you had done to hurt me or disappoint me, it would just make you rise up. Yeah, because I hate failing you. I hate hurting right. you. That would be the last thing I would ever want to do. So we then developed a communication style that is unique to us. Mm -hmm. Just as you've communicate, you developed a communication style that's unique to you. And you think you're connecting, but you're really not. And I would say, I thought I was doing the right thing by just being super nice and performing and not bringing things up because then you wouldn't get mad at me. Yeah. We were, we had a real fear-based love. I mean, we had a strong romantic love. We had all, all kinds of great love for each other, but we were actually very fearful, not necessarily of each other, but the response or how or if or ever we would really fully connect. And I'm so thankful that as, as I look back, there's such a safety between us. And I can't say I wish a crisis upon anybody Never. of what we went through, the pain. But the pain caused us to face the hard questions of why weren't we communicating and why isn't there safety here? And even how I was living a lie because... I wasn't telling you when I was disappointed or sad or when you hurt me. So you had no idea what was mm -hmm. going on. But I was also a setup for a trap because then when somebody started speaking into my heart, I was ready to be open and vulnerable with someone else. Right. You had a limited ability to be able to speak truth. And I had a limited ability to be able to communicate love. You see, in relationships, in marriage, we're designed for intimacy. Simply this, to be fully known and to be fully loved, but that requires vulnerability.